Biden's brain. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Of course, others would be like, oh, shame on you for even saying such a thing. But, uh, <laughs> oh, dear. I mean, I'm telling you, what, truly, what, what an embarrassment to uh, watch this guy and in the, the blatant arrogancy of, of so many that are trying to tell me that 81 million, I mean, the most that has ever voted in an election, 81 million, or, or at least that has won an election, 81 million people voted for that guy. <laughs> uh, and then there's still the circus of January 6th. Uh, the circus was the election. This is not, January 6th wasn't the circus. And so, oh well, let's move forward. And uh, hey, thanks for praying for the Vacation Bible School. It has gone very well. We had our largest crowd last night. Um, imagine, and we don't even do the teens during this time either. We, we just do the, we do three years old through sixth grade. And we had, uh, I think, uh, 126 kids, I think, last night. So running around everywhere. And, and I would say that we'll probably have even a larger crowd tonight. Uh, being water night, and uh, I'm thinking we'll have two or three uh, fire trucks out there. So we're going to hose them down. So. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, they, they've had a good time. They've learned about Jesus. They've learned about his word and nothing better than that. And and uh, you're right. We, we don't do vacation Bible school for the teens because we use them. They have been a great help this week. We have some of the best teens that uh, I can say any church has. They, they have come out with a attitude to help and to be a blessing and I think we're averaging somewhere around 60 helpers this week and 60, 65 helpers. And so it has uh, been just uh, such, such an encouragement um, to see so many uh, helpers, so many of these kids that are out. And so then I was telling my wife as uh, we were dragging ourselves home last night, um, like I'd mentioned to you, you guys have a great 4th of July weekend. It's going to be a great day. This is probably, uh, I think it's my favorite holiday of all of them. You'd think as a preacher, it'd probably be Christmas or Easter. Easter is one of my favorite and, uh, definitely for church services and stuff, but for holidays in the, in the year, I think this is my favorite. And the, the reason being is just the time that you spend with family, the barbecue, uh, you know, just sitting around and, and enjoying yourselves with, with other people. And it, it really is, uh, some of my favorite, it probably is my favorite holiday, 4th of July. And so I hope everybody has a great weekend. Be in church Sunday if you're here. Uh, you know, be in your place. It's going to be a great day there. We're have a, we're having a barbecue, you know, the hamburgers, hot dogs, everybody else bringing all the sides and, um, and then no evening service. And, and, uh, we're actually headed up the steamboat that afternoon after the uh, service and the meal is over and, uh, going up there and, and then spend all day Monday in steamboat with our in-laws and, and then Tuesday, most of the day, come home uh, later on Tuesday evening, and uh, it's just going to be a great time. And so I just really thoroughly enjoy it. But anyway, I was telling my wife, I said, we get through tonight, or one more night <laughs> of BBS, and then uh, this Sunday, then I preach at a fellowship the end of next week in Lyons, Nebraska, looking forward to meeting a bunch of new guys that pastor up in that area. Uh, then I'm preaching in a fellowship the week after that in Kirk, Colorado. And so I love those little towns. Lyons, Nebraska isn't very big. Kirk's not very big. You encourage some of these guys that are in these smaller churches. And I, I just, I don't know. I just have such a heart for these guys that are out there in the middle of nowhere and want to encourage them. 
But I told my wife, get through that. So about a week and a half more of a crazy schedule. And then <sighs> breathe a little bit and, and enjoy the rest of the summer. So we'll uh, see how it goes. But um, And also... Uh, I'm, I'm meeting with uh, a family Wednesday when I get, I'll get home Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm meeting with family, uh, uh, Perez family. Um, I think his name was Tim Perez passed away and, um, I was doing a graveside, uh, service, uh, two days ago, I think it was three, uh, this week. I did a graveside service and there was a lady out there at the cemetery and saw the family, went over and talked to the family after I was left, came to the church and doesn't have a church family. And so I'm going to be doing another funeral uh, next week. We'll be using the church building. I'm not sure that anything else is going to be needed, but um, anyway, it's, you know, it's become a ministry and, and helping people during their darkest times. And, and I pray that we can help this lady out and her family, uh, to just be prepared. So <clears throat> for, for eternity, all of us, right? So, all right, well, let's get into the word today and sorry, I kind of rambled there for a little longer than I planned to, but. Um, there's some, some good things that, that I would like to, uh, uh, share this morning and these dogs are going to be the death of me. <laughs> I was in Hezekiah and, and, uh, um, chapter 19 and Israel has been, uh, taken captive. The, the king of Assyria has, gotten very brave now and very arrogant. And so now he's come to Judah and he says, look, we wiped out Israel. We're going to wipe you guys out too. So you might as well just give up and come with us and, and become a part of the Assyrians. And Hezekiah, uh, it, it tells us that um, they, they came to the king and told Hezekiah, uh, this is um, what's going on. And he tells us we need to give up right now. And verse one of chapter 19, second Kings, this was Hezekiah's response. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it, that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. I, I said this a while back and, and I, and I mean it and, and I've seen it that if we think that we can walk by ourselves and walk all alone that and 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 uh whip this world by ourselves we are we are mistaken this world will beat you down and that's why i can't understand i don't, I don't see how people make it through this world with uh without the lord on their side and 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 i think many times they they uh they just live through this world and, and they medicate through, you know, the different addictions that are out there. Uh, some become very sour, some become very bitter, some become very introverted and, and just refuse to spend any time with anyone doing anything. There are those that just spend their whole life seeking power and control and money, trying to find happiness and all of those things. And, and, um, it, it, but but none of that works, and, and the only way that we truly have victory in our lives is through the uh, seeking God and walking with Him. And and here Hezekiah had had an enemy that was very powerful and had taken over much of the world by this time, their known world anyway, in that area, and um and uh, was very formidable, and uh, this enemy was and. What does Hezekiah do? He doesn't just give up right then, but he goes directly to God. And uh, we need to we need to do the same thing. And you know, I and I was and and he goes on and he prays a very powerful prayer in uh, verse fourteen. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. So the letter that this uh, leader, the king had, had sent him to him, you need to give up and, and do all of this. And so he took that letter and he spread it out and, 
in on the on the table or on the floor, probably on the floor, and Hezekiah uh, hit the ground, and Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see, and hear the words of Sennacherib, uh, which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. You, you see now, not one time did he mention himself. Not one time did he even um, um, mention, you know, the, the idea of, Lord, let them see how anointed is uh, Judah is or anything like that. All he prayed for what was uh, for God to be honored and glorified. And, and, and Lord, use us and use us as the example of your power being illustrated to all of these people and, and a very humbling uh, prayer and, and one that, that brought honor and glory only to God. And, and so very powerful. And then you go on through the rest of this chapter and, and it's amazing to me that uh, it says that that night that uh, in verse 35, and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, a hundred four score and five thousand, 185,000 people. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. And it came to pass, as he was worshiping in the house of uh, Nishrach, his god, that uh, Adramelech and Sherezer, his sons, smote him with a sword, and they escaped into the land of Armenia, and uh, Ezarhaddon, his son, reigned in his stead. You know, it, it just... I don't know. There, there's some things here that, I mean, there's all kinds of things. How, how would you like to be a king where two of his own sons killed him? How, how much hatred would, would his family have had towards him? I, I mean, the, how much of the, the desire to have the riches of the world that they were willing to kill their dad so that they could have it? I, I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. It's just, uh, it truly is a sad state of affairs that and that is much of how the world lives. And, and I don't know how many times I've seen where someone has passed away and, and ultimately you can tell that the only thing that the kids care about is the inheritance and what they're going to get out of this. And there was no care or any concern about the one who died. And, and so you see that. I also see some sad things. I, the, the nation of Judah at this time was just a skeleton of what the whole nation of Israel had been when they were 12 tribes following God. And, and it reminds me of how much we can lose when, when we turn our backs on God and, and turn our backs from doing the right thing. And, and Hezekiah wasn't the only good king during Judah's time, but there were many who were bad kings also. And, and we know that when the tribes were divided, that they started losing their nation and they started losing land and 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 David had worked so hard to uh, gain back what even what they had lost during the judges times and and um and from from what God had given Abraham and here here we see that they just continuously started losing and started losing and and I think we need to watch out in our lives and and understand that in, in today, when we read Joshua, where Joshua goes in and takes back the land, representing victorious Christian life in our, in our, in our lives as believers today. And how much ground have we lost? I mean, I, I, I look at our country and, and definitely our country has, has lost ground, <clears throat> but 
What about in our own personal lives? Have we lost, have we lost uh, ground in our own lives? Have we... Uh, uh, <laughs> They're in here. <laughs> oh, these dogs are going to lose ground. They're going to go underground is what they're going to end up doing. So... <laughs> Oh, have we lost ground, though, in, in our own spiritual walk? I mean, I think that we, we need to be growing, and, and we always need to be going forward. And let's make sure that we're going forward. And, and so here, this was, a, this was a powerful prayer of Hezekiah. And, and, you know, God is always about restoration, all the time, he's about restoration. I, I was reading in in uh, Chapel's devotion this morning in in the Gospel of Luke, and, and we've been looking here the last few days uh, in in his little devotional on the prodigal son, and his and the prodigal son has returned, and this is what the father said in verse twenty three: "And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry." For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. You know, the the celebration of the prodigal son. And, you know, I, <clears throat> I yeah, there, there's a lot in this, but it, it's amazing to me how, how the father continued to wait and continued to watch. And then when he saw his son coming, came running to him and and brought him back to the position where he was. And that is the exact picture of who God is and what he wants to do in our lives. Have, have you lost ground in your spiritual walk? Well, turn around. Quit being the prodigal and, and move back towards God. And, and you'll see that draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And, and so how, what a, what a joy that is to see God do that. And, and bring us back to where we need to be in our walk. And so, and it's never, as long as we have life and as long as we have breath in our lungs, there, it's never too late to be restored back to where you need to be. And so, and I pray that we all know that and understand that. And so, uh, and, and God is with us and, and there's no reason to fear and there's no reason to, uh, let all of the, the craziness that's going on, you know, uh, Heard our walk, and and then I read this in Psalm 149, and how powerful this is. That what do we need to do? Well, we need to praise God for who He is. Look at the first five verses of Psalm 149. Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in Him that made Him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. Let them praise His name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto Him with a timbrel and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Now, so there, let, let's go out. Let's do that. Let's rejoice in who God is. Let's rejoice in being a child of God. Let's not be afraid of whatever comes and let's walk with him. And 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 if we've lost ground in our walk, let's turn around and let's gain it back and, and find God to restore us and and. And be thrilled with that. And then the daily reminder is in the last few verses here. Just don't let the world impact us like it's trying to. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. You know what the two-edged sword is? Right here. Right here. Okay? And so let's go out into this world, into our country, into our community with, with the power of God's word to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. Do you see that? To execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. Uh, so what do we do? You know what? We go out, we tell people about Jesus. Just what we're doing in, in vacation Bible school, we tell those little kids about Jesus and, and how much he loves them. And, and what do we do with those who are unrighteous? Well, we stand for what's righteous. We stand for what's good. 
and we stand for what's written in the word of God and we say, this is good, this is right, this is honest, this is just, this is biblical, and and you pronounce judgment on those who are wicked. I mean, that that is, you know, we have this idea that that preachers are all supposed to be just fluff marshmallows and, and cream cheese and, and, uh, and it's only about love. And by their idea of love, it's all about acceptance of everything that's going on in this world. And that's not at all what scriptures tell us. We got to stand for what's right. You have to stand for what's good. You have to stand for what's moral. You must stand for what's biblical. And when we stand like that and we, we, we tell people, remember the, 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 the words of a, of a righteous man are like a deep, are like deep waters, right? They're healthy and they're refreshing. And, and, uh, and, and yeah, they pronounce judgment on the wicked. And so yeah, there is coming a day when those wicked characters are going to find out, just like Sennacherib did, that the king of Assyria, that you might think you're all bad and, and that you're all powerful, but God's the one that's all powerful. And so what do we do? Well, we go out and we serve him. And this year, let's, this uh, 4th of July, this Independence Weekend, let's go out, let's praise God, let's thank God for what he's doing in our lives and thank God for the freedom we have to speak this and tell people about Christ and let them know that uh, there is something much better coming. So, all right, it's the weekend. You pray for us, water and I.